I'm going to look at three games from round five of the Baku Olympiad. And there's a theme that I think links them all. So, first game is from the Belarus-Netherlands match. And to this point, uh, both teams with a 100% score. And this is a game between Kirill Stupak, representing Belarus, and Benjamin Bok, representing the Netherlands. Uh, many of you will remember that uh, just a short time ago, um, Bok, Benjamin Bok was playing in one of the challenge matches in Beal over the summer and, and did pretty well. And this is his first Olympiad uh, representing the Netherlands. And here, well, the normal move for White is to play bishop e2, bishop d3, you can also play rook c1. Um, and obviously white has a bit of a space advantage, but black has the two bishops, pretty solid. Okay, there's a, an interesting game in prospect. But Stupak played e4. And uh, this is... I mean, it seems funny to play e3 and e4, but, but the idea is to try and bring the knight to, uh, you know, into one of these squares, looking at these weakened squares on d6 or f6. But this is incredibly risky. Um, bishop b4 check. Now, if the knight goes back to, to block the check, then the, I mean, black is obviously going to be fine there after, after say, uh, let's say c5. Uh, must be absolutely fine for black. But this is not the intention um, uh, if you play e4. The idea is to play king e2. And th this, this is a mad idea. Um, so white has this space and the possibility to strand this bishop with c5. And, you know, you gain a tempo on, on the queen as well. Incredibly, Kramnik has actually played like this before. Um, and there was an, an amazing game from Vikonze 2015 between uh, Jabava and, and Sharich as well, which I, I was actually commentating on. Mad game by Jabava. Um, here, Bok played queen g7, uh, which, well, not one of the moves that uh, has has been seen so far. Well, at least Leko played queen f4 and um, Sharich played queen e7. But queen g7 is a very interesting move and, um, well, there's a, there's a point to it. Okay, let's see. c5. So this is the big idea that although the king might might look very oddly placed on e2, in fact, you're kind of cutting off this bishop from its... Uh, its army. Um, obviously knight d6 check threatened, so castles. And now queen a4. I think white has to react pretty quickly here, otherwise, you know, black is just going to break with, with knight d7 and e5. So hitting the bishop, and this gets protected, and in fact, well, we can already see the potential of this queen on g7, because if g3 is the move we like to play, and bishop g2, then black can already take on c5 and take on b2. Check and hit in the rook. So the king came up to e3, I and mean, this is utterly bonkers, really. Threatening bishop takes knight, but black has a good reply, b5. And if the queen retreats, then knight c7, and this saves the bishop. Obviously, there's a, a fork on d5 if the bishop is taken. So Stupak exchanged on b6 and took on c6 so white is a pawn up here but with the position opening um this just looks fantastic for black <laughs> i mean this is just mad having the king here i and i really don't see what's wrong with just playing rook b8 here followed if if possible by bishop b7 i mean this is just brilliant compensation for black but instead bot played more adventurously with f5 allowing the rook in the corner to be taken. And he was hoping that the queen would now move back and then he could check. And opening up the f-file is fatal for white. I mean, this is just a tremendous attack. But instead, knight f6 check played. And this gives back a knight, but at least keeps the um, f-file closed. 
So black is the exchange down, but has tremendous compensation. Um, and rook d8 is a very nice move. This We're going to see some very interesting variations in a moment where the rook proves useful on the d file. g3 played. My computer thinks that a3 is the best move here, but I mean, obviously, you know, black has still has tremendous compensation. g3 looks very natural just to take away the f4 square from the knight, but probably not a good move. And here's where Bock plays very creatively. Bishop c5, it's an excellent move. Uh, very unusual. Again, if that's taken, then queen b2 check and, well, too many pieces in the attack. The knight threatened, uh, bishop a6 coming, it's it's over. So, queen a4 from white. And here Bock plays knight b4. He misses an extraordinary move. Uh, now, when I say misses, um, this is a computer move. I think if you find this at the board, uh, you've got a mind made of silicon. Um, well, first of all, let's 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 go through the obvious moves. Well, queen takes d4. This loses to knight check, opening up d file, and then queen b2. And well, trust me, this is this is winning for black. The the really interesting move is knight takes d4. And now there's an amazing move for black, knight b4, uh, and I'm sure this was the one that didn't even enter uh, box head. Um, if this is taken, let me just take you through one very attractive line. Rook takes d4, the queen covers e5, but now bishop a6, pin and win, and queen takes bishop, check. And queen e4 is a very elegant checkmate. Um, so bishop takes d4, great move. But Bock played knight b4, which also looks very dangerous. Stupak covered the d-pawn. Bishop b7. I mean, this looks absolutely terrifying. Rook a8, queen d1. And here, well, my machine wants to play e5 straight away, which is utterly bonkers. Um, uh, by I should say, by this stage, both players running pretty short of time. I mean, so much to calculate in this game. Bot played the bishop back to f8. a3 stops, well, rook a2. And now e5. Um, I mean, it's a very brave move. Pawn takes. So now black is a whole rook down. And this is the crunch moment. I mean it looks very, very frightening. You know, there might be a might be a queen check and and, and maybe a rook check down here, sometimes e, bishop a6, sometimes rook e8. Um very difficult to know what the best move is. In fact, bishop g2 is probably good for white. Um, but very difficult to see that you can defend against all these threats. In any case, rook d1 was played, and now Bock found a great idea. Rook e8 check, and now here's the crunch move. d3, and this opens up the lines. Great idea. Um, I think, I mean, my computer still thinks that white can try to hang on like this, but in practice, this is, just looks utterly lost. Anyway, uh, rook b1 played to cover b2. Check. And now a really subtle move by black. Queen e6, very nice move. Threatening queen b3 check. It's nice that you don't kind of crash in straight away. Very subtle indeed. And now white is utterly lost. If king d1, queen e1 mate. And otherwise, well, this is what happened. Queen c3, this was taken, and queen c6, and here white resigned. Rook threatened, as well as queen takes pawn, followed by mate. Very, very interesting game. And that win helped the Netherlands to uh, victory in that match. And so they have five out of five doing very well. Uh, the round before, they, they demolished England. 
Um, so yeah, Netherlands playing extremely well. Let me show you. I want to show you another game. This is great fun. From the Hungary uh, Latvia match, and well, I couldn't resist this one. Alexei Shirov against Richard Rapport, two highly original players, not afraid to play very unorthodox moves and um, yeah, go out on a limb. So and they did not disappoint. So Shirov with the white pieces. Um, already Rapport's done something uh, a little bit unorthodox. Put the knight on e7, although this is a, a, a known variation. So sometimes the knight will come to g6, sometimes you play g6 and bishop g7. Um, and Shirov, well, here we go. The nuttiness starts already, h4. So this is kind of directed against g6, you might play h5. And also directed against knight g6 as well. Again, h5 could be the move h6 played by black. So Shirov pushed on again and stopped the knight coming into g6. Um, Larson once had this position as black and played pawn takes pawn. Ah, probably quite sensible. And then closed the position with d5 or tried to close the position. But Rapport played knight g8. So the knight <laughs> looking to come back to f6 and actually i think this is a very clever idea because in advancing the h pawn of course the g4 square has been weakened so well why not put the knight on f6 to look at g4 and also the h5 pawn so not a bad idea d5 knight came back to e7 and c4 so the position the structure pawn structure looking a little bit like a king's indian now um, and here, well, it just got completely mad. B5. So the position's starting to explode already. And again, knight f6, probably, you know, well, safer than the game continuation, followed by c6. Oh, not bad for black. But f5. So Rapport is just exploding the position on both sides of the board. But our man Shirov not phased at all, knight h4. And you have to ask yourself, how is this knight going to enter the game? And how is that bishop going to enter the game? So black could take on e4, but then knight c3 and knight e4, not bad. So it looks like a very favourable king's Indian. Anyway, f4 played. So, well, that closes the bishop's diagonal. And yeah, maybe knight f6, maybe bishop g4 taking the h-pawn. And here Shirov found a very original concept. He played g3, and after this was taken, he played f4. Seeing that black's pieces were so gummed up, he just wants to crack open the f-file. And this is some bizarre hybrid between a king's Indian and a king's gambit. I mean, only Shirov. Unbelievable stuff. Um, I mean, black can take this, but I tell you, all bets are off here. If you, you know, if white castles quickly and plays uh, queen f3 and so on. Anyway, Rapport played knight f6. Pawn takes pawn, bishop g4, queen d3. And of course, if black recaptures, then I mean, positionally, white stands in very well here. Very weak e pawn, big space advantage. So Rapport played knight takes h5, allowing e6. So already we've got, after 17 moves, the most bizarre position on the board. So this pawn, I mean a fantastic pawn chain. Um, but black has destroyed white's pawns on this side of the board. I mean, in practice, this does look very good for white. Uh, certainly much easier for white to play. And here, Rapport made a bid for freedom with knight g6. This was taken, and then queen f6. Well, clearly he's hoping to win this knight back. Oh, by the way, he's also threatening mate in one. That's the point. He thinks he's going to win that knight back, but he clearly uh, excuse me, underestimated um, 
Shirov's next move, queen f1. Very simple. Defending against the mate, and if queen takes knight, e5. This is the killer move. I mean, this is unbelievable. <laughs> White hasn't got any development. Um, tacking the queen, and if queen takes bishop, then, well, white threatens check, black threatens checkmate in one, but white gets there first, check and mate. So all Shirov needs is a queen to do the biz. Incredible. Um, so in this position after queen f1, remember white is a piece up, and he's now winning, basically. Rook g1, right, if queen takes knight, queen takes bishop. Shirov took the rook in the corner, and here, well, Rapport thought enough was enough. Um, you can take the rook, but basically black is two pieces down, and, and it's utterly lost. <laughs> I mean, the most incredible game. One more game. Um, well, we saw yesterday how the women's world champion, Ho Yifan, uh, lost. Today, she struck back. A Berlin. This was from the China Italy match. Now Bishop C five is the normal move here, but D six. Well, of course, it's very orthodox, totally playable. And here, well, this is also a very well known position. And, and Black should simply. Well, I beg your pardon. Black should simply play Bishop G seven here, and we get this familiar kind of position and you know, c4 etc well known instead black played a very odd move queen e7 it's absolutely not necessary to play the queen out and after knight c3 well black is already in some trouble um if bishop g7 then knight d5 careful about opening up the e-file I mean, black can survive this, but it's it's not very pleasant. Maybe bishop g5, maybe just c3. Um, but here, black panicked and played knight b8. And this is not a good move. Bishop g5 threatens knight d5. And there's no really good defense here. Um, black tried c6. But unfortunately... Knight d5 came anyway, and this is an absolute killer. Takes and takes. And I'm afraid Black's king is not going to get out alive here. If e4 attempting to keep the e-file closed, then simply knight d2 followed by knight e4. And this, this wins for white. In the game, bishop takes bishop happened. Knight takes... And now white is having a lot of fun. Check. Discover check. The queen came back and now queen d4 is even better than taking the queen straight away, attacking the rook. And possibly following up with knight f6 check. Bishop e2. The rook was taken in the corner. Good move. Queen c3 preventing black from castling queen side and also setting up this little combination to win black's queen and obviously white is utterly winning now in this position black resigned and that helped the chinese team to win a uh, very quick recap of positions in the women's section Ukraine and Russia meet in the next round. They're the only two teams with 100%, but China just behind. In the open section, only three teams with five out of five. India play the Netherlands in the next round, and the Ukraine uh, play the USA. So India, Netherlands, Ukraine, only teams with 100%. Uh, Ukraine had a very good victory against China today. Uh, Wednesday is a rest day in Baku. Uh, it's the Bermuda party tonight, the legendary Bermuda party. And uh, they, the players have a rest day to recover from that. And then they resume battle on Thursday. <laughs>